welcome to a brand new episode of the Wooly Thistle Shopcast. I am here with my co-host Maggie. Hi. I'm Corrine. I own and operate the Wooly Thistle and Maggie is my managing everything, all the things, <laughs> helping keep the chaos under control. It never feels chaotic, does it? Yeah, <laughs> all the time. It's okay, we, we've oh. become very good at um, managing chaos in a good way. I think. I think it's good. We're good at multitasking. That's what it is. Yeah, we can walk and chew gum. Yes, and knit. <laughs> and knit. There you go. Still knitting. Still knitting. So anyway, welcome to a new episode. If you're brand new here, thanks for checking us out. And if you're a returning viewer, you know, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here and giving us a thumbs up and uh, subscribing to our channel. That is really important so that the word gets out there and we get to, you know, um, get in front of other people's eyeballs too, which is really important so that our shop can grow and be healthy and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, loads and loads. We got a jam packed episode as usual. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to try not to speed, re you know, speed speak all the way through it. There's so much to share, so we'll we'll just get right into it. And I think we should start with the winner because it's always nice to uh, start with winners. Um, the winner this time <coughs> is Mary P, and she wins a twenty-five dollar gift card to the Willie Thistle. And Mary said she left a comment. She subscribes to the channel, gave us a thumbs up, and she says. Oh my goodness, this was such a great podcast. You both are so inspiring and I absolutely loved Emma's video. So do we. She does a great job. Uh, she is just so talented. We agree. I am new to color work and now just watching your podcasts, I want to do so much. I can't pick what to do first, but I know to go slow at first. Um, and I'm definitely going to try to get some of that Aradale yarn. I love his ethics and thought process. Woo, Mary, yes, there is... <laughs> You're spoiled for choice. <laughs> there is so many different projects you can do and, and different ways into learning how to do it. And you're, you're learning color work at a great time, I think, where there's loads and loads of resources, including Scandi Works um, Nordic Knitting Primer, yeah. which is brand new. Anyway, um, there's tons and just really glad that you're here and thanks for leaving a comment. So you get a $25 gift card and you just need to send an email to info at thewoollythistle.com. Remember, there's two L's in Wooly and um, just put winner all in capitals in the subject line and we'll get that right out to you. I'm going to throw in here. If you'd like to be eligible to win a prize, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, what is that? Ding that bell. We, I never say that, but yeah, for sure. That, yeah, yeah that, that, um, I think that tells you when new episodes come up. There you but go. we try to always have a new episode come up on Friday morning, every other Friday morning. We're yes. not quite weekly yet. Right. Oh my God. No. <laughs> no. But we that's how we, we pick winners at random from the comments. So just leave us a comment. And thank you for the comments. One of my favorite ways to unwind of a weekend is reading your comments because we mm -hmm. want to try and get back to everybody who does leave a comment. Yeah. And you're all very lovely. Uh, we really appreciate the nice things you say. And, you know, um, it's just, it's really nice. So thank you for leaving mm -hmm. comments. And um, if you leave a question in your comment, we do try to circle back to you with an answer as well. Yeah. But if you have a burning question, it might be better to send us an email at yeah. info at the Willie Thistle. That way we can get right to you and help you out. Um, I find I like to end my days going to the comments. Oh, it's so nice. Because everybody's so friendly. And yeah. Warm, and they're like, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Sometimes by the end of the day, I'm like, that's what I need. That's what I need. <laughs> yeah. Back. Well, our Facebook group too is yeah. very, very supportive as well. In fact, the price fairy for the cow had popped in yeah. and one of the... Um, one of the winners the last time was, I can't remember her name, I'm sorry, but she had left a very vulnerable comment or oh. post saying that, you know, her project didn't work out the way she wanted it to and she was winging it and she was embarrassed and this and that. But she also posted that her husband saw the hat, loved it and wanted it and took a really great picture oh. of him wearing it with a big smile. And I just thought, and then she had so many comments of support, um, you know, that we're all learning and, you know, Knitting mistakes are often design elements yeah. and all of that. So anyway, she hopefully has claimed her prize fairy prize yeah. and we have done the same over in Ravelry as well. So, but we'll talk about the cow, I'm sure. Um, I think, first of all, we should talk about world events a little bit because um, obviously it's on all our minds uh, and I'm talking about Ukraine, of course, and we have a display of 
their uh, flag colors here. This is just some uh, Jameson and Smith and Rama, I think. Yeah. And we found some <laughs> others throughout the shop. Um, I think we have seen an uptick in these colors. Uh, yeah, in... and we've, I know, I know um, we have a new customer yeah. service um, on our email. Yeah. And I know that um, in our email, we've been getting like, is this the right gold? Is this the right blue? Right. Um, and we're happy to help with that. Yeah, um, yeah. We're always happy to help you with your color selections, but yeah, um, we've definitely seen this question. We can tell that you guys are are wanting to support um, by knitting various projects out there, such as yeah. uh, Kristen's or Scandi Works um, mittens, which we'll put a picture of here. They're just lovely, yeah. um, and, and I believe a hundred percent of her sales is going. That's towards, right. Yeah. Uh, is it Red Cross? You can I'm not sure if it's Red Cross. I forget. There, there's a few really good ones. In fact, we. You put together a list yeah. um, of, of different charities. So what we want to say about this is, first and foremost, um, we're all in this together. And I think we all want to support Ukraine. So the Woolly Thistle wants to do our part as well. And we have a couple of offers for you there that um, the proceeds, the entire 100% of the purchase price, will go to Ukraine's Red Cross. Um, we will make a donation to that once our fundraising is is completed um, and what we have is this lovely little sunflower set of stitch markers from the woolly thistle we are selling these for $12.95 and like I said 100% will go to um, I just dropped one I think yeah okay. um, but you get a, a really nice big handful of these lovely uh, stitch markers that are like flowers mm -hmm. they're all that shape there you go. And then you get a lobster claw progress keeper of an actual sunflower. So we put these together and we hope that you'll throw them in your cart when you're shopping with us. We will send 100% of the $12.95 to Ukraine Red Cross. And the other thing that we want to do is the victory course and the vanilla course that is launching today. Both of those you can purchase uh, for their regular price and we will donate 100% of that course price to Ukraine Red Cross. So they are $25 each, but all of that will go to help people in Ukraine. Um, and we'll talk more about the vanilla fluff and the vanilla course because it's going live today. So we'll talk about that shortly. So that's what we want to do. We want to... Um, tempt you with lovely things and we will send 100%. Now, this is actually going to be in effect before you see this podcast because we're starting it on the Tuesday. Um, so it's in effect and it goes through Sunday night. So you have time, the courses you can buy through Sunday night and we will donate uh, that full amount to the Red Cross in Ukraine and we will sell as many of those stitch marker sets as we have Um to to help raise money um and we'll see how it goes so hopefully we will raise some um you know uh some yeah. good money that will go to a good cause and help the people on the ground there which i think is what we need to do the other thing we feel called to bring up again and the last time we started this was uh during covid when covid came up the knitting buddies program many of you will know what that is but if you don't when covid started we created a knitting buddies program where we asked you to get in touch with us um, if you were wanting to have a buddy because you were going to feel isolated in real life um, and I think now is a time for us to come together or for us to help bring people together if they want um, a knitting buddy that can, you know, just be a support. Um, and you can meet in person or you can meet probably more likely over the interwebs. So if you want to um, partake in that, and I know that there's still knitting buddy groups going from before, um, we, we did have loads and loads of people take yeah. part in that yeah i forget the exact number but um it was a lot we put together a lot a lot of a lot of groups and what we try to do is maybe between four and six people and then it's up to you to make it work so um what's the best way for people to get in touch with us we're scrambling to put this together um i can add the so what it is is we ask you to fill out it's a it's a form that you fill out it has your information and then we just um pair, pair match buddies buddy groups yeah. up 
Um, there is a link that is live in our Ravelry group, and I will add it to the, the blog as well. I think yeah. that that's a nice, that yeah. way if you're not in Ravelry, you can still access Knitting Buddies. Maybe we can link to it in the show notes and here. And we can link to it in the show notes, yeah. And maybe pin it in Facebook. Oh yeah, we can yeah. do that too. Let's do yeah. that. Okay, so we will we will get all the places everywhere, but by the time you're seeing this, you will definitely be able to get to it through the show notes here. Um, and that is just, it's just a thing for us that we can do because we, we know lots and lots of people yeah. now. And, and if you want a buddy, then we can certainly put you in touch. And it, it's really fun to sort of think of uh, making that happen again on yeah. a more regular basis. I will say, because I feel a little bad. I know we mentioned Knitting Buddies a few weeks ago and people signed up and I still have not buddied she's up busy. people. Yeah, we will. But Caitlin's coming back from vacation and she's going to be helping me. Um, from vacation? Or maternity leave. Sorry. It's not, <laughs> not really vacation. a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I have three children. I know that's not a vacation and I just misspoke. But she's coming back from um, maternity leave and although she was on vacation recently. I she was. She I saw that. On yeah, I so saw that. was lovely. I'm not completely wrong. But <laughs> the whole thing has not been a vacation. Right. I'm sure. But, right. Um, but she's coming back and um, is she would be a great help. Yeah. She would help with that. Okay. That's wonderful. So we yeah, will get so, you paired up quickly. So I promise there'll be no we'll languishing no. Yeah. Um, yeah yeah that sounds good that sounds good and you know we are a knitting podcast and we know we are knitters we know how therapeutic knitting is for a busy mind and in a crazy world and we want to offer you a place of escape as well as a place of support and um, and just to keep encouraging you to keep on knitting working things out for yourself through your knitting and uh, giving you something else to think about when the news is just getting too much. It's too easy to, to watch and watch and watch. Um, and we want to give you a safe place that you can maybe take a break from that. Although, please don't forget that we are always mindful of what's happening in the world and yeah. um, as everyone is. And, you know, we care about that. But we do want to keep offering a nice sort of safe harbor where you can come and enjoy your knitting with us um, and use your knitting as your own therapy. God knows I do for yeah. sure. Yeah. So all of that to say, um, it's a hard time right now. Um, on, on top of a hard time that we're just coming out of, it's crazy. So yep. let's just uh, band together, do what we can and um, keep on knitting for sure. I will say it is really encouraging to see all the designers. I wanted to um, mention that. Yes, yeah, go coming ahead. Out and patterns that they've released. Um, we already mentioned Kristen Drysdale and her pattern. Yep. Um, I know Knitting Lotta has a yes, pattern. Yes, mittens. Um, and I've seen Knitting a bunch Lotta. just doing sales and yep. um, proceeds. And uh, Yeah, lovely Melody Hoffman, who is B Mandarin's friend of the show. Um, she raised about 4,000 euros. She's in Latvia. Well, she used to live in Latvia. She's in France right now. Yeah. But yeah, so lo there's lots and lots of opportunity. And we definitely want to do our part too. So, um, and we will we will mention things in the newsletter as we yeah. become aware of different things too. And also, we wanted to mention one of um, our wonderful uh, staff members mentioned a Ukrainian designer on Ravelry. And her name is Anna Rachenko. And she has patterns in English. And I was thinking, or we were thinking, that it would be a great way to support a Ukrainian designer um, by purchasing patterns if you're so inclined. And she has these lovely um, granny socks, which are knitted in iron weight and would make a wonderful bed sock, I think. Mm -hmm. We were wondering what, what what yarn we would use to knit those. I might try Vans. I think Vans. Especially, like, if I'm not wearing them in boots and things yeah. like that, just for around yeah. the Yeah. I would, I would look at doing... Um, um, Vandry and maybe um, a thread of mohair. Oh, very soft, but also nice. a little bit more hardy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, we, we wanted to mention her because it was great that Krista and Grady um, mentioned uh, this designer. And on Ravelry, she is Wooly Wood with two L's. Yeah. And it might be um, possible... I can probably try and open up a thread in Ravelry where we can share because I'm sure That's she's a great not idea. the only designer. Yes, so who if we use the support, yes, so, um, yes, yes. I if will... we can share Ukrainian designers and uh, projects being uh, designs being made to raise funds and things, yeah, yeah that's a great idea. Let's yeah. do that. I'll do that. It's wonderful. So back to our, our normal uh, <laughs> subject matter of knitting and Maggie. What are you wearing today? I'm wearing my love note. <laughs> 
I did not think it would be done either, but once I finally sat down to do the sleeves, it just Blue. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. So I'll stand up. So and tell us all about it. First of all, like, it's drapey. Just, yeah. yeah. So, so this was, so it's the Love Note by Tin Can Knits. Um, this is my first full on Zero to Hero. So I I had a Romney fleece I bought. Right. I washed it. I and It was huge. I did the whole, it was really huge. I still have some. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to sit just where it is. It's clean, so I don't care. Um, but yeah, I, I washed it. Um, and it wasn't even, what's the word when... Uh, skirted. Yeah. It wasn't even like. Oh, so you skirted in, so it. I really had to like skirt it and get any of the. Sort Did you of wash it in hot it? water so the lanolin came oh, yeah. off? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when I did that, I did it in summer so that. I could be dumping stuff outside. Yeah, the one time I did it though, the water I don't think was hot enough, but it did lift the lanolin, but then it all settled back on and you cannot get it off after that, it feels like. Yeah. Didn't do a good job. Yeah. This one, it wasn't a very greasy fleece. Yeah. Um, and, but uh, you know, and then I tried combing it and it didn't like it, cause it or I tried carding it and it didn't like it. It was pretty long wrong. Yeah. So um, did you do so Rolex? Comb, no, I combed it. Oh. Like I have combs. Yeah. And I combed it and dizzed it off the, it was just. Amazing. Um, so it's a two ply and yeah, and I love it. And then it sat, it sat in my stash for years. It's, um, oh, not that long. It, it really was. Like it's one of those like, I can't Time goes have by. been, yeah. but it was like two years ago that I did. So give them it. a close up of the so, lace. Can see the it's like a little it's leaf. It's such a pretty pattern. It is. Mm. And uh what gauge is it knitted at? Would you say? What what size remember. needle? So I discovered um as I was putting the sleeves on the needles, I did a couple things wrong with the body, but it fits perfectly, so it all it's worked perfect. out. Perfect. Um don't Tell do, us your mistakes. Don't do going. like me. Um, <laughs> Let's learn, all, from, I learn didn't from do Maggie. a gauge swatch. I just pay, I just started. How dare you? <laughs> I know. How dare I just you? started and then I, I counted up here to see if it matched the pattern and it matched the pattern and okay. I don't remember how yeah. many stitches. So you, you, this was, was your gauge swatch. So this basically was the gauge swatch. And I knew I had already washed the yarn yeah. and it didn't bloom a lot. Right. So I was confident that I was not going to poof again yeah. when I washed it. Um, and I had swatched this once before and I found it didn't poof. So yeah. I, I felt like it, I knew that so it, it was wasn't, true. So you weren't cold. Like you, you'd already... For reading the pattern, it said like, um, switch to larger needles. <laughs> And or when I went to pick up the sleeves, it said using larger needles, and I'm like, larger needles? No, I did the whole thing, and what? I had done the whole thing on, so I knit the whole thing on like US sevens, and you're supposed to cast on with sevens, but then go up to like tens or something. Oh wow! Oh wow! Right, and it's you... a really loose gauge, so I didn't. <laughs> so that's don't, amazing. Don't like did you do any adjusting? No. Oh my god. I mean, I Lucky. had put once I went through here, once I went through the yoke, I did put it on my knitting barber cords, and which I tried are amazing. It on. Um, and I was really happy with the fit. Yeah. Like, so. Yeah. So then it was just zoom, zoom. Yeah. So then mm -hmm. it really was, especially this really knits up fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've kept a notebook now, so I know how long I like the body. Yeah. So I didn't have to. Right. Mess around with that. And yeah. Second guess. And yeah. then, yeah, same thing. The it's lovely. It's lovely. I did add, so the sleeves, should they tell you, they, patterns written for like three quarter length sleeves. Um, and I knew I wanted them longer than that. So I did, um, I only did like three decreases. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and the whole sleeve? And the whole sleeve. Wow. Because they actually, they have you, there's like no decreases in really? your sleeve. Oh, because it's a three-quarter Because it's length, a three-quarter length. Yeah. And it would have been, it would have been perfect. I had yeah. tried it on, but I was like, no, nah, I'm not a full yeah. It's sleeve. March. It's March. And we live in New Hampshire. If yeah. I was somewhere else. And I'm always chilly. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just added in decreases. And... I think this is a great choice of project for the yarn. Because Romney is a long wool, so it's got mm -hmm. drape, yeah, obviously, and you've knit it at a gauge that allows that to happen as yeah. well. Very nice, so. and the color is gorgeous. It's such a lovely neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. I honestly wasn't sure how I would feel about the color. I went back and forth with like, do I play with dyeing it? I'm not very good at dyeing. I've dyed a couple of things, but it just. But do you like the color? I'm surprised I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's so warm. Apparently it just needs to it's sit very, in the stash for a couple years. It's soft and warm, and I bet you that, you know, people try to dye it, dye things that color anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really happy natural. with it. So 100% Romney? 100% Romney. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. So, and yeah. talking to Romney, though, we have more <clears throat> coming, hopefully, in the next few weeks from uh, Oyster and Pearls, which is that uh, Romney merino blend mm -hmm. that's really nice so yeah and i think the garth and or the snowdonia sock yeah it's the same color as this yes yes um, it is yeah. <laughs> it is it is literally the same color yeah as this. yeah um 
Nice. Yeah, yeah lovely. Nice. Lovely. So um, now I am thinking of my next love note, although I think I might need a vanilla fluff and then a love note. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm in sweater mode. Like all of a sudden, I just want. Hey, you know, sweaters, sweaters are not that scary once you get going. And there's <clears throat> there's definitely different levels of patterns as well. You know, there's yeah. ones that end up nice and fast and are fairly. You know, they don't have a lot of shaping or what have yeah. you, and they're nice and quick. Because I'm really not fast, and I think this took two, maybe three weeks. Like it's just, it just. <laughs> this is what you knit during the color work cow. <clears throat> I started the Monday before the color work cow because I was like, I don't know. What do I do with four days before the color work cow starts? Not a sweater, of course. <laughs> Start a sweater. Yeah, Although possibly. having that you're defiant, anything must seem quick and easy. Yeah. And fast. Yeah. I mean, it's just <laughs> knitted it one once. and it's on a size seven needles. I mean, just. So you kind of cheated yourself, though, because <laughs> so you could have been knitting it on a size 10. Although I think that might have been too big. I think for this yarn, it would have been too big. Yeah. Um, the pattern has you hold up in green weight and mohair. Oh, right. Um, and Ooh, it lovely. is really open and Ooh. drapey. And, yeah. Um, so I'll, the next one I'll probably do. you know do what? I would knit one of these in Devonia with a strand of mohair. Oh, God, that would be lovely. Because remember I started that, my ridiculous ranunculus. Yeah. It's never gotten off the ground. Yeah. But the Devonia with, uh, should I that. should do that. You should do that. Or that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're very similar, I think, in finished product. Yeah. 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 Or um, what about Jagger Spun? That's what I've been thinking. I Is think that what you're going to do? Jagger Spun and maybe some plum. <gasps> I need to see what would... So I've been thinking Jagger. For oh the my next. God, that yeah, um, that would be really really nice, and yep. not much yarn probably. Not really. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the mohair that brings up. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it, and so are you. And darling. right now, I don't have any. I don't have any sweaters with mohair. But I think for the next two, I think it's going to be a vanilla swap. It's all then. the mohair. Yeah, we do love mohair now that we have it. <laughs> I've yeah. been knitting with it a lot, and we have some projects to show as well. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Ask me what I'm wearing. Oh, what are you wearing? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I keep telling everybody what I'm wearing without mm. you asking. I know. I'm so bad. I just know like, that's... back what, to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like this. This is actually Blacker Classic. So this is a discontinued yarn that I knit this sweater a few years ago. It's well I was sad that they discontinued this I yarn. was super sad. I bought up as much of it as I could for my own stash. <laughs> Oh, I love it. You mended the elbow. Yeah, because I've worn right through it. So a black hair classic is a 100% wool, I, British wool. I don't think there's anything um, specific about mm -hmm. it. But this is the Glenfiddich cardigan, which is an all over cable. Ooh. And um, it was actually, let me find the designer's name because I want to be sure to mention her. Where is it? Glenfiddich cardigan by Anna Maria Otvos, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the O with the little dots. Um, Anna Maria Otvos on Ravelry, though, and you can find this in my um, projects on Ravelry. But anyway, really enjoyed this. Um, I don't know if I've ever shown you it. I think I might have talked about this in my old uh, audio podcast days. Okay. But remember last week or last time I was talking about how long I spent doing the tangled yeah. yoke? Uh, cables. These cables were fine. What gave me a challenge on this um, was the set and sleeves. I like what I did, which is basically it went from um, it went from reverse stockinette there to uh, stockinette here without any defining, and it looked a bit messy the way I was doing it. So I worked and worked and worked and figured out how I could put this sort of line in this yeah, demarcation, and um, yeah. So this was my big achievement on this on this sweater otherwise it just was really easy to knit really enjoyed it I wear this a lot as you can tell um this is the one I also mentioned at some point somewhere that I had knit a neckband too tight around the back of my neck this is it and when I put it on it was really it scratching my neck and just felt uncomfortable so this uh this whole button band all the way uh around came off and back on again with more stitches and it's never bothered me. I have not put any buttons on it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's bad. 
But anyway, I, I thought I'd wear I feel less bad that I've not put those last four buttons on my design no. cardigan now. Yeah, you just want to wear it. I'll, yep. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I've patched the elbows. I will say, I've been going through sweaters that I've knit that I'm not wearing. Um, and uh, my shifty was too short and I've added like yes. four inches and that's really good. I think that's a good segment that we should talk about. Um, well, I have, you're reminding me, I have a cardigan. It was from Hannah Fettig's texture book. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of the cardigan. I can find it. But I knit it um using some yarn I'd picked up on vacation and I know now what's wrong with it the I didn't pick up enough stitches so the collar the shawl collar it it's too sh like it rolls so it's too oh, short up here yeah. and it just yeah. pulls the sweater up yeah um and it really took me just kind of learning yeah. and growing as a knitter to realize oh that's what I did wrong and there's there. nothing wrong with going back right so I think adjusting. I'm just gonna yeah. unpick the Perfect. the shawl collar because I don't wear it now I like the and sweater you I love the color and I would wear it mm -hmm. if I did the collar right and actually, I just came across, I still have some leftover yarn. Oh, perfect. So I can... That was, the, that was the best thing. I actually found a ball of this leftover from when I was knitting. So ladies and gentlemen, don't throw away your leftovers when you finished a project because you will want to come back if it's a well-loved yeah. piece and put it, you know, fix it up. Although you could do with contrast and what, all, all that. Right, yeah. But we should, if we do any mending or fixing of things, yeah. we should um, I've we should also been cutting that. toes off of my socks. Um, like even one of my retro Zaria, my Mondine socks, yeah. I've worn the heck out of them. Yeah. But I mean, the, the toe, it's always the toe for me. That, me is the heel. Um, no, I mean, I've, I've, I've cut out heels before too. Yeah. Um, and, but this one, it's for some reason it's the toe. I fixed one toe and I thought the other one was okay. And this morning I went to put them on and my toes peeked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, so what are you doing? You just cutting off the top or do yeah, you? Yeah, I kind of run my needle through and pick up the stitches and then I just cut it. And then I unpick like yeah, a row. like so, I cut a row above. Yeah, two. but doesn't that end up in a lot of million ends? Like if you only cut one stitch, then you could just unravel it. No, like I mean, so I cut. But you do have some ends, but they'll flick off. Yeah, and then by the time then yeah, and then you your, work your way you down. Your yeah, thing to the, yeah. So I usually cut a couple rows above. Yeah. I have done that on a sweater, you know. Oh, actually, you did it on that. Here we go. This is not planned, but I actually um, kitchenered this whole sweater. This is a total Frankenstein sweater where this part and this part were knitted separately because I knitted it twice. And then I, I so anyway, when I cut it, I only cut one stitch and then I unraveled okay. it because I didn't want to have if a If it were a sweater, yeah. but it's a sock. It's only so there, many. So I just. Some of that cutting therapy there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And then you just pick, then you and just. And I just pick it up, Marina, at the toe. That's wonderful. And then it's good to go for another 10,000 miles. Or very more. resourceful. <laughs> very resourceful. And I did, I, I, cause I do have a scrappy blanket, but some of my sock yarns, I like to keep a little bit in case I mend them. Like, I don't mm -hmm. care if I had a contrast toe. Are but... you knitting on a scrappy blanket? I, I am. It's not getting any well attention. Oh my God, though, we should bring them in because I was just knitting on mine yeah. last oh, night. Oh, nice crocheted. It's, I'm doing oh, even the better. Straight. Yeah. Oh my God. We yeah. can bring them next time. We should bring them in because I What's love mine. What's funny is mine, I always end up pulling out in the summer, which makes no sense at all. <laughs> like it's fine to work on it. Pull out the blanket. The blanket. Yeah, that's a little. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. But that seems to be when it starts to get attention. Is it big? It, it's getting pretty big now. Do you use it to cover up? Now I can. Yeah, I mean, mine. I, I don't, <laughs> unless I'm working on it. Yeah, no, I do. Um, I, I sit under mine at home all the time because it's big enough. It covers waist to feet yeah. um, on the diagonal. <laughs> and then it is long enough. But yeah, I was sitting there sort of saying, hey, you want an enemy? I like, think yeah, it's I funny because it, it definitely shows my sort of color moods, which is very pink, purple, blue. It shows my <laughs> color moods and my wooliness morphing. Yeah. Which I thought, oh, I should probably just start a new one and make it all wooly. And I'm yeah. like, no, this is a lifetime yeah. project, and it's it's there's so much history in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, let's do that. Bring that in, yeah. yeah. All right. So, what are you knitting on, Maggie? <laughs> I didn't bring my knitting. What? Um, I know. Well, now that I've finished my sweater, like this literally came hot off the heels last night. <laughs> last <laughs> night, I went and soaked it. I spun it in the oh, washing wow. machine. Yeah. And then I I stretched it. And I hung it, our bathroom gets really warm, so I hung it over the shower bar. And it dried? Far enough away from the cats. And it was dry it this didn't, morning. It didn't. Nope, it was perfect. Wow. <laughs> Don't do what she did. <laughs> That's a my warning. Main, my main concern was that the cats would get at it. Because yeah. they kept Ugh. coming up to this yarn and wanting to bite it. My dog. She's the worst. She decides to chase things that aren't even there just so yeah. she can like run through stuff and 
and anything on the floor. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's, that's amazing. amazing. So, so, so I didn't bring any whips. I am, so now my tapestry cowl can get a bit more love. Which is looking um, really nice, what I've seen It is it. looking really nice. It hasn't grown very much. The part, I, part of it is like by the end of the night, by the time I sit down at like nine o'clock to knit, um, my brain is toast. Totally. So I'm it's like, dark outside. Even, I'm in bed. even just counting like the row, and I'm like, I don't know, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> which is why it's so much easier to just go around and run around and around. <laughs> Getting stuff done. Getting well, stuff done. I want to mention my uh, the mossy baby pants that I knitted. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the picture here. We got a picture from Caitlin of little baby i'll not mention his name because you know we're on social we're on right, right. the internet but little baby and caitlin are looking lovely and he is sporting his lovely little He's retro so zaria uh little uh baby pants which i really enjoyed knitting and i will i think i need to cast on another pair though i think this next one i'm going to convert and try and knit it in the round although i really like knitting them flat because it was moss stitch it didn't matter yeah i was just worried about the seams but baby doesn't seem to mind so maybe I'll just do that. Yep. So yeah, thank you, Caitlin, for letting us share that. We're so excited that you're coming back. Yes. Are we not? Um, so I don't know if we want to talk about the cow at all. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Hold your <laughs> hold your horses there. So what I've been see, she doesn't ask me anything. <laughs> what are you knitting at? <laughs> thank you, Maggie. So I haven't got very, very far. But this is the hat that I'm knitting for the cow. And I'm just loving it. It's a very peery, uh, wee design of sort of looks like knots and crosses or a checkerboard. But what I'm thinking is I might duplicate stitch some pretty colors here or there, oh, just cool. random and yeah. very, very few of them. This is a uh, Rama Fennel Garn, of course. You could even just like embroider. And I, oh my God, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, so where's the book okay. that I'm knitting this from? Uh, it's, is it under there? Oh, it is. Just want to show you the pattern in case you have forgotten what I'm knitting. We can't have that. There it is. I'm knitting the hat. I'm and right now back. I've got quite a, I've got probably four more rows before the decreases. So it's fairly potato chippy and I don't need to think too much. I like it. Isn't it nice mm -hmm. feeling? It is. It's yeah. just <sighs> Yep. So that's just um, great. There's something um, so comforting about wool. <laughs> tell me about it. <sighs> there really is wool and knitting yeah life is good if you've got wool and knitting all right so thank you for allowing me to share my whip there well i mean that does segue into because i was gonna say even though I've, I've been lax on my own cow knitting yeah um there are so many great projects out there um oh for the cow just for the cow yeah like, uh, so even if you're not knitting with us, check out the hashtag, which is uh, hashtag TWT Color Cal 2022. Yep. Um, you can look in the Facebook group yep. and on Instagram. Yep. Um, and of course, and there's the a Ravelry. whole thread in Ravelry. Yep. Um, it is just it's it's like, amazing. Every time I go looking at it, I'm like, oh, I want to knit that. I, I know. Knit that. I know. Knit it's that. it's brilliant, and there's okay. some really really lovely. But we'll talk about the cow first. We're going to go and check in with Kelsey. Okay. Kelsey is back. She's been away for a little bit and she's back with us and she is talking about knitting with bits and pieces, right? Knitting with bits oh, and pieces. leftovers. Adding well, in textured yarns maybe you have in your stash. Using different weights together, that sort of thing, getting yep. a little bit brave and creative. So let's go to Kelsey, but make sure you come back because we're going to mention things in the cow. We have things to show you from the shop that you do not want to miss. And we have another prize winner. We have more segments to come yeah. from contributing uh, uh, oh. contributors from <laughs> from our uh, from our from, oh my god from our from our shopcast. What do we call them? I don't know. You need a break. Go watch Kelsey. <laughs> come right back though. Hi, it's Kelsey. I'm back. I'm filming at night, so I apologize if the lighting is a little bit funny, but I wanted to get in here and just talk a little bit about some of our yarns and some techniques that I like to use for color work that are a little bit outside of just your normal, um, you know, knitting in two hands or anything like that. It's just some things that I've learned over time that I think are kind of fun and I think push your knitting a little bit and also open up the possibilities that you can knit with. So first, most of us think of color work as being two color color work with the same yarn. So I think if you've seen the blog that I've, I've talked about these before, these are my swatches in our different Rauma yarns. So this one is in Strickagarn, this one is in Filgarn, 
This one is Vams. And this one is in Gamelseri. And each of these was knit with two colors of the same yarn. So they have the same weight, they have the same tension, they have the same um, thickness, the same texture, all of those things. So when you're finished, you get a very smooth, very cohesive fabric. As another example, you've seen this hat before too, I think, is a hat, uh, Katie's Kep, knit in Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight. Same thing, very cohesive fabric, very woolly fabric, very opaque, can't see me through it, fabric that really has an even texture all the way across. Another example that I don't think I've shown you is actually knit in Bruska. Bruska here is one of our Retrosaria yarns from Portugal. It's 100% Portuguese wool, but it has a very similar texture to me, in my, in my hand at least, to the Jameson and Smith. It feels a little bit different, but it has a, this, a similar wooliness that makes it really work in color work. So I used these two, these two colors. This one is 6C. It's sort of a chestnut red brownish color. Sorry if that's not coming through very well. And this is A. A is one of their undyed bases. So the other thing that's neat about Retrosaria is their colors will be a number and a letter. And the number is generally the, the dye. So this is sort of a red-brown dye color. The letter will be the undyed base. So this is A. So this is their lightest undyed base. This is 6C. So this is actually dyed on a much darker brown base, which gives it the sort of rich color. It's not this color dyed on this. That would be a much brighter, more vibrant red-brown color where here you get some more variation based on the natural base color, which I think is awesome. That's not the point. <laughs> Sorry, I got off track. The point in what I was talking about is it is a worsted weight yarn, a little string, that knits up really nice in color work. So I just improvised this hat from a stitch chart that I found in um, Andrea Rangel's alternate stitch dic dictionary, stitch dictionary, and it makes a nice, rustic, but wooly, cohesive fabric. Because again, it's the same. The two colors yarns are the same base yarn. But a question that I get all the time when I'm answering emails is, I have leftovers in this yarn, and I want to buy some more in this yarn. Can I knit them together? Can I knit them in stripes? Can I knit them in a marl? Can I knit them in color work? And the answer is, Often, yes, but. And the but is, if you want a really cohesive, even textured fabric, it might be a little bit tricky. Something like a Jameson and Smith uh, Shetland Supreme knits really well with the Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight, mostly because they are made by the same people, they're made from the same kind of sheep, they're made from the same, from the sheep that are from the same islands, so the texture is very similar. If you mix something like Jameson and Smith with a Marie Wall and British Breeds, the yarn construction is different, so the texture will be a little bit different. The weight is very similar, so you wouldn't have a lot of tension issues. You'd probably still have a very even fabric, but you may notice that some of the colors are a little shinier or a little woolier or a little fuzzier than the others. And that's just personal preference. If you want it to be completely even and completely uniform, stick with the same yarns. If you're looking for a little bit of texture, then you can kind of go nuts. And just an example of that is this cowl. This cowl is actually not knit in some in yarns that we carry at the Woolly Thistle, but the, I have a few similar yarns next to me that I'll show you in a second. This is actually knit from a brushed alpaca yarn, which is the sort of lighter, redder, redder color of the two and a wool alpaca blend. So the browner, more sort of tobacco brown color, the same color that's in the ribbing, if you're looking for a difference between the two, is a much smoother yarn. It's got wool, more wool in it. And then the redder yarn is a much fluffier yarn. The red yarn is actually 
labeled as an Aran weight, and the browner, the more brown, tanner, tobacco-colored yarn is labeled as a DK. And that sounds crazy, didn't it, together? But it actually works really well. I didn't change needle sizes. It's color work all the way across, making these chevrons. And you end up with a really fuzzy, really woolly, but more structured fabric than you might if you were using just the fuzzier, fab, the fuzzier alpaca yarn and a more, um, a fuzzier, warmer, cozier end, end product than if you were just using the brown yarn by itself. And just a couple of woolly thistle yarns that we do carry that I think would have a very similar effect would be, these are two balls of the alpaca lin. So it's very similar in composition to this reddish yarn. It's a linen core with some alpaca and I believe a little bit of wool and I've lost the ball band, but it's a really fluffy yarn that is also listed as being a worsted to Aran weight yarn, which it doesn't look like, but that's how it knits up because of that extra fuzz. And I would actually knit this with probably this with our realm of Vams, which is also listed as an Aran, but is a completely different construction because it is all wool and it's all um, kind of a, it's a fluffier worsted, worsted to Aran weight, but it's certainly not as fluffy as this. So you'd get an interesting texture between the two of these things. And you get an, an effect that is similar to if you were to hold a strand of mohair in with your yarns, but you're doing it completely with two com separately, um, two separate types of yarn just knit together. It does take a little bit of gauge experimentation. You may not get it right on the first try. You may not like the fabric you get on the first try, but I think you can get some really cool textural differences. I was even thinking when I was looking through all of my stuff here that I might pair it with Strickagarn. Strickagarn is a rounder, smoother, um, denser yarn than the Vams is. It's made from similar wool. It's made from Norwegian wool, but just the way it's constructed makes it um, a much more structured yarn and a much more, um, I already said rounder, but it's a smoother yarn as well. So if you put in the textural difference between the alpaca lin and the strickagarn, you can really, really see the difference. And you'd end up with a fabric that I think would be really interesting balancing between the two of those things. So when you email me and you say, well, can I knit these two things together? My answer is yes. My answer is give it a shot. My answer is there are very few situations where I would say, don't even try it, don't even try that. It, it's gonna be a disaster, because it really won't be. If you look around on Ravelry, you'll even find sweaters that are knit with you know, a strand of a worsted weight and a strand of mohair lace weight in a brioche. And it comes up with a very interesting, sort of thick and thin, like opaque and translucent, translucent, sorry, I'm having trouble speaking today, translucent texture that is really, really interesting. So it all depends on what you're looking for. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is scraps. I love scraps. Um, I'm sitting here in front of my yarn stash, not to say, look at my yarn stash and I have too much yarn, but to point out a few things. I'm actually sitting in front here of a few of my buckets of odds and ends that I've had from different projects. And then for even smaller bits, I have this bucket. And I've got little teeny pieces from all sorts of different yarns, all sorts of different projects. This is actually Retrosaria uh, Mondem yarn, which Woolly Thistle carries and is, is a wonderful Portuguese sock yarn. Um, and I, when I reach the end of a project, if it's mittens or a hat, and I end up with these little bits and pieces that you know, you really can't make anything else by itself with, throw them in this bucket. Then when you wanna make some color work, if you wanna play with texture, if you wanna mix textures, like I said, you have all these little bits and you don't have to go out and buy another whole ball of yarn, at least at first. You can experiment with all of your bits and pieces and then go say, you know what? I really liked that Mondim and I wanna go get some more balls of that so I can make a full sweater where this is not gonna get you very far. That said, 
I have a separate bucket. <laughs> I'm just talking about all my buckets here. Um, of my Jameson and Smith. So my Shetland wool scraps and partial balls and little bits and pieces. And the same for Uridale. Uridale, we get a, um, you know, a few one to two times a year. Uh, we're working on getting some more. It's a little bit harder to come by just because of the smaller company and how it's made. But it's so similar to Jameson, Jameson and Smith that I'm pretty confident that if I knit any of these little bits together with any of those little bits, I could come up with a pretty cohesive fabric and just play around. So in honor of the color work, Cal, I just wanted to talk about my, my plans are actually to kind of wing it. Um, start with a stitch count of a, cat, a round cowl or a hat and kind of see where, where these colors take me and where I decide to go with probably a Piri motif. So a Piri motif is usually, you know, three to five stitches, these little teeny motifs in Farrell knitting that are not very complicated. Um, if you've seen a Farrell sweater, they're often all those stripes or all these different Piri motifs. And it gives you a chance to knit a whole motif and not worry about completely running out of yarn, where if you tried to knit, now I've lost my samples, you know, a full larger chart repeat and you only have small bits, I might be scared of running out partway through. But then it also, that's just another effect. That's another thing that's interesting. The very last thing I'd like to talk about is my current whip. My current whip is actually a kid's sweater. This is, it's a bottom up sweater. This is the bottom up. It's got a little bit of a roll on the bottom right now. But these are two completely different yarns, um, two completely different companies. Uh, the weights are similar, they're not exactly the same, but I wanted to use this, these two colors together and that's what I had in my stash. So this is what I'm working on right now. It's called the Shikazi sweater. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, Shiyazi sweater, apologize. It's by Native Knitter, Jennifer Berg. Um, so, and it's for my, my daughter. So hopefully you're excited for the color work cow. That's not for the cow. That's another thing I'm working on because that's not an accessory. But you have got your yarn, you've cast on, and you're excited to join us. Hopefully some of this has been interesting. Hopefully it has maybe released you of a burden of thinking that your yarns always have to match and if you have little bits of, a, of one yarn you can't use it ever again if you don't get more of the same yarn that's absolutely not true especially with the yarns that woolly thistle carries i wouldn't i wouldn't sneeze at mixing some fennel garn with some stricka garn with some jameson and smith and just these are all different weights but just the wooliness of it will kind of knit it together and um, I'd love to see what happens. So if anyone has any mixed weight, mixed breed, mixed yarn, mixed fiber color work projects that you're working on, I'd love to see them. Um, mention them in the comments below or post them on Ravelry and I'm, I'll, I'll be sure to see them that way. Thanks for joining me, have fun. Well, it's great to have Kelsey back with us. We hope you enjoyed that. She is a very resourceful knitter, a very knowledgeable knitter too. So hopefully you found a nugget in there that was um, interesting and exciting for you and that all these extra balls of yarn and whatnot, uh, you should always keep them for sure. Do yeah. you keep yours? Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, I'm Scottish, so I... Especially now, um, between Kelsey and Emma, um, seeing how you you can use even just the smallest amount and like... To just give that pop color of color. color. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Oh. So let's talk about the cow, which is in full swing. Full swing. We've got one more week. Callens, March 18th. Oh my God, only one more week. I've had a good knitting. Only one more week. Yeah, I, I won't be do done by the, if you're not done, if you've picked a larger project like I did, um, it's okay if you're not done. Um, it really is. Just, I mean, just, just keep it's, knitting. It's about learning and community and just keep on knitting. An so. inspiration from all these other knitters too. Yeah, my cue has grown. Um, <laughs> so. Mine too, always. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we're in the middle of that. So keep on knitting. Is there FO threads in Ravelry set um, up? I there's an there FO thread in Ravelry that's set up. I mean, people have, they, I think some people finished within two to three days. I know. And then they started but they project. start knitting something else, so, which yeah. is really good. And in 
Facebook, we use the hashtag. In Facebook, we use the hashtag. Um, and if you're in Facebook and you want to see other people's projects, you can just kind of go to the right um, margin. On the right side. Yeah, if you're on the browser, it's a little trickier in the um, in the app, but it's doable. Um, and you just find the hashtag, click on it, and it'll show you any any post that has that hashtag. that hashtag. And it's um, T W T Color Cal 2022. Yep. Yeah. So loads of inspiration and so much good chatter happening all over the place between yeah. those two places, which is just really, really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah so I yeah. better hurry up if I only have a week left. It's the weekend, though, so I'll get knitting. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So uh, and will you be you will not be finished. I will not be finished. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping especially I want to do the double length. Yeah. I don't want to like I like the single length. It's yeah. fine. Um, but I, I and wanna... for a penny and for a pen. I know. Is what I always say. So um, I think it'll just kind of take me a while. Do we want to just give a little mention of the next cow that's coming? You know, I've already teased it a little bit on social media. I'm so excited so, for this one. I know. I am too. Yeah. Speaking of the queue that has grown longer. Go ahead. Tell them what it is. So we are planning a hap along. A hap along. A hap along. What's a hap? A, a hap is a traditional Shetland shawl. It really um, is. It really is. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're planning a hap cow um, that will start. April. Um, mid to late April. Yep. Yeah. So we will get you all organized. We will have a nice run up um, to get ready so yep. that you know what a HAP is and what a HAP is not. All that kind of stuff. We will have, I think we've got an excellent interview lined up with a HAP specialist. We are scanning the pattern world to find wonderful HAPs to offer his suggestions and things like that. It's going to be really fun. And we're going to dig into the history a little bit and we're going to sort of get washed with that Shetland ness yeah. of it all. So yeah. I'm kind of excited for this. We've never done a hap along. This will be our first one. Yes. And this will be a six week. Six cow. week cow. Because these are larger. Some well some of them are and some of them are regular. But you know it's sh it's a shawl. So yes, right. it's bigger than maybe it's a just more hat. stitches than like a hat. Or, yeah. So and completely different. It can have color work in it, but it'll be more just sort of striping and things. Or it can be all one color. Yeah. So we're still working out some of the details, but we will Super have excited, them for you though. as soon as possible. Yep. You can make sure you're on our newsletter yep. and you'll find all the information there. So to get on our newsletter, if you're not already, just go to the website and you can find a link on there and several places where you can just join up. Um, yeah. And then that's it. You're, you, you start to get our weekly emails where we tell you everything that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we are giving away... Uh, Going back to the color bar cow, the fight, the price fairy has been popping in and out. So keep chatting because there's a week left of that. And um, our Facebook group is private and free. So, you know, free to chat our way in there. Yes, and just wonderful whips and effle is happening yeah. all over the place yeah. in there. And both of our groups are just filled with really chatty and really helpful people. Um, Lovely people. <laughs> if you ever um, are stuck with a project, or a problem um, or in a your problem. project, yeah. or you have a question. So, since we're still talking about color work, do we want to Yes, about definitely. Things? Yes. So um, one of our um, friends of the shop, Mary O'Shea, um, we sell her seawall hat and hat mitts. Yes. And uh, she hat knitted. Hat mitts. They're mitts. They're not she, gold. Mitts, right. But, um, she, we sell the yarn sets um, for her that beautiful pattern that uses. Um, uh, Marie Wallen's British Breeds. Yes. And, Gorgeous. And um, Mary has a new pattern out. She actually sent us samples. Yes. So we can... Ooh. We can share them with you. So we do have yarn sets in these available. And when you buy the yarn set from us, you get a discount code that Mary is offering to Holy Thistle shoppers who purchase the kit. Right. Um, so the, so we sell the yarn sets. Yes. You have to go to her to purchase <clears throat> the pattern, but she's giving you a discount, which is super nice. Yes. Um, and these are knit with Roma Thinnel Garn and a strand of plum. I love this. They are so cozy. And the hat has this lovely oh band. Gosh. It's got this little pico edge, which I'm particularly fond of. And it's knitted, yes, it's knitted with a... a would you mind if I put my big head in this? Probably not, no. Oh, that's so cute. <gasps> my glasses. I really like it. <laughs> it's really, really I good. like that style of hat, though. Yeah, it's comfy. It's is comfy. It like a cloche style hat. How they say that? I don't know if it is though. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of looks like it. But either way, oh my gosh, these my hands are toasty. Um, <laughs> the the um the mohair gives it a lovely silky feel. Yeah. And of course, I love my fennel garn. Yes. So, I think, really nice. I think that these could even um my youngest is very like you're itchy. Mm -hmm. um, 
not networking. I think that this would, but yeah. I think this would easily you think tip so? her over. Yeah. If you pretend, like with the, if you with pretend the that you bought them, she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've sent these back to Mary, <laughs> but, no, I, said, yeah, but I have the ability own. to make my own. Um, <laughs> so, it's sorry, Mary. Yeah. I was, Let's keep these. Yeah, they are so nice. They really are. They're so squishy. And of course, you could so go nice. any color ways you like, but I like yeah. that she did this uh, gradient. Yeah, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. They're really nice. So those yarn sets are available in the shop. Yes, thank you. At for, the time we're recording anyway. Thank you for working with us, Mary. We mm -hmm. love them. Nice. So let's talk about what's in the shop. There is so much to share with you. So let's just get into that. Maggie, what's in the shop? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much. Well, I Where think, to start? I think we should start with Uridale. Okay, Uridale. Uridale. In case Ronnie's watching. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> By the way, you so many of you wrote that you really enjoyed uh, Ronnie's interview, which is lovely. Thank you for that. I think he he is an amazing person, and um, he really t walks the talk. Right. He's yeah. he's living those values and uh, making it available to us, which makes me very happy. And you too. Um, Thank you for shopping with us for all your Aradale. This is where you can get it here in the United States and we're very proud of that. Yes. Yeah, it's just a really special yarn. I know. Uh, like. <laughs> so we have it in DK weight and the two ply jumper weight. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to knit some DK uh, to do the cowl that we suggested Yeah, in the newsletter, I think, or on the on the page itself. So I'm going to be knitting that. I'm not sure what colors yet. I love oh, that juicy oh red. Oh my God, juicy <laughs> red. so good. Even this purple. Way. Oh yeah, juicy um, purple. There's some okay. nice gold. Yeah. I'm a blue gal. Yeah, there's, really and good. there's, is that Sam? There's that like, the no, there's three shades of blue. Really nice. Like a nice gradient. Mm -hmm. So good. So, so this good. is organic uh, native Shetland uh, wool from organic Shetland sheep. Just the natural brown. Raised by Ronnie on a farm on Shetland. And Aradale is the name of his farm. <sighs> so, this. so this went live last Friday. Friday. Um, so we had a limited number of cap kits and those sold, sold rather fast. Very quickly. Um, but we are also offering Uridale by the ball. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to help you. Um, pick colors pick for colors. a DeCrofter cap or a Katie's cap or any of the, um, like a Burra cowl. Uh, no, not Bustabini. Bustabini. What yeah. am I thinking, Burra? What's Burra? There's Burra bears. There's a Burra cowl, but that's a Murray Wallen. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. You could knit that too, actually. You could knit that yeah. too. That would yeah. be amazing. Mm -hmm. So we're always happy to help you if you want to yes. see how colors look together. Yes. We've been trying to put more photos together just automatically so you can see how they go together. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is where Grady is coming in and yeah. just earning her keep. <laughs> she is a wonderful addition to the team and she's yeah. our full-time, full-time customer success rep yes. and she is answering all your emails and helping you uh, decide on colors and getting you photos all that good stuff so please do um use grady that's why she's here is to help you yeah. uh, get what you get what you want and uh, help you with your orders yeah. yeah yeah so there is still some even though those kits are sold out you can sign up to be notified when they're back in stock um, the nature of this amazing yarn is that it is going to be quite a while before we get a restock because yes. he has to grow can, it. He has to grow it. And once it arrives here, we spin it down into little cakes. Yeah, because we get it on these big, big cones and we spin it down. Uh, you did a reel about that. You can see on our yeah. reels on Instagram, uh, them being spun down. Then we put the bands on, we yeah. label them, all of that. It's a whole process. Yeah. Um, and, and we're happy to do it. It's completely worth it. But it just means it's not fast. Yeah. Um, so, but you can sign up for the back in stocks, but we still have um, we do. We plenty have... uh, available in the shop. We do. At least time of recording. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, the DK is, I think, um, really smashing. We have more DK than we have the jumper weight. I think because there's more patterns written for the jumper weight. Yeah. But I am going to, oh, it's squishy. It I am, is, I'm going really to knit squishy. with some of the DK to show you that next time, I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, Ronnie and his farm uh, and Vivica as well, um, really happy to be working with them and yeah. enjoying what they are doing there. Uh, shall we talk about the vanilla fluff? Yes. Okay. So the vanilla fluff is a pattern <laughs> <laughs> and it's behind you here, Maggie. Sorry. Where? Um, I'll scooch. This how about thing. I bring 
Yeah, let's bring her in a little. Bring in Morag. That's her name today. Um, so this is the vanilla fluff that I knitted for uh, my daughter. And you've seen her wearing it on social, I think. Um, and I actually changed it up. And, well, I had finished this as uh, an all-in-one. I hadn't done a split seam. Um, and that's what's on the photograph that will be on the pattern, I think. But then I ripped that out. And I think last episode, I had ripped it out and knitted this as a split hem. Mm -hmm. And you can see it all folding up. Yeah. And you were saying the magic of blocking. So this yeah. is the magic of blocking. I didn't do anything special. I, I wet it, you know, I put it, I soaked it. And then I laid it flat. And it's, you can see the drape in it. Even with the mohair, you can mm -hmm. see that there's drape in that. And it's just so scrumptious and uh, lovely. Longer sleeves than the original vanilla, but you can change that up as you like. Um, and uh, I had done a Pico mohair neckline, but I changed this out too so that we could get it over all her hair. She has a lot of hair um, and it was too tight. So you might want to uh, think about that. However, this pattern we are offering as part of a kit mm -hmm. or in a course. So I'm, yeah. I, we have been working very hard and it's now ready. The Vanilla Sweater course is a multi-video course that takes you from casting on right through to finishing both the original Vanilla Sweater and the Vanilla Fluff. Yeah. And you get both patterns when you purchase that. So that's a good deal right there. So Maggie, what comes in the Vanilla Fluff kit? So the Vanilla Fluff kit comes with a large woolly thistle tote. And this one has nice gussets on yeah. it. Um, it comes with all of the Rama Fennel Garn and Rama Plum <sighs> that you need to knit your size. Sweater. Really good color. Really good color. Very juicy. Very juicy. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have these in an array of colors. Um, that you can choose from and a wide variety of sizes as for the original vanilla sweater too yes yes so you get the pattern you get the yarn and you get the bag mm -hmm. and the the yes both yarns so that will be on sale starting today mm -hmm. uh, as well as the vanilla sweater course if you are so inclined to want to uh, follow that yeah. that will basically hold your hand you're knitting it with me I knit right along with you yeah. um, and it's very similar to the victory cardigan course if you did that it's more of the same yeah. idea with that now we have the vanilla sweater which is the original and then we have the fluff so we have two yeah. different patterns they are distinct patterns because they are written for different gauge and um and yarns and yeah. There's a few different design elements in there. So we all know the vanilla sweater yeah. is sort of a three quarter length. It's a, you know, shorter um, length and body. It's got the split hem. It's got the round neck. It's one of these layering pieces that you just want to keep knitting over and over and over because it's just, you know, it's, yeah. it's very useful. Um, the vanilla fluff obviously has the addition of the plum, the Rama plum. The sleeves on the Vanilla Fluff are written for full length, though, of course, you can change that up. Just remember, if ever you're making changes that's going to require more yarn, you have to buy more yarn. The yarn that comes in the kit is enough to knit the pattern as written in your size. Um, but full length sleeves, slightly narrower sleeves, too. And um, it's got the split hem instructions as well as just knitting it straight down with a one by one rib if you want to do that. It feels more sweatshirty to me. Okay. Um, my lilac one, when I'm wearing it, um, and I haven't worn it out and about, but I tried it on, it's in the video, it's in the, the vanilla sweater course. It feels like a sweatshirt because it's got longer sleeves and it just sort of hits the right length. It's a little bit longer. Yeah. Really, really like it. So if you've previously purchased the vanilla sweater pattern or kit that came with the pattern, you will automatically receive the vanilla fluff for free. We think that's a good thing to do. Yeah. And then come back and buy your kit. And, and that's good. Um, if you're buying the vanilla fluff, um, you will not get the vanilla sweater uh, original pattern, but you will get a discount for the first 30 days. So you can get the pattern um, for a discount. However, when you buy the course, you get both patterns. So that's how we're doing that. We're yeah. trying to give it away as much as we can. Yeah. We are offering both the Vanilla Sweater and the Victory Cardigan courses with their patterns uh, for $25 each. And all of that money will go to the Red Cross in Ukraine. So I just wanted to remind you of that. Um, 
Anything else to say about the vanilla fluff? Just that we're super excited. It's been a long time in coming and it's finally yeah. here. Um, and I hope that, that you enjoy it and that you, you know, that you want to knit with a bit of mohair because that's really fun. I know many people have already knit, knit their original vanilla sweater with the fluff and that's totally fine too. But so the pattern actually takes into account the fluff being included for gauge and making sure the drape and everything like that is good. So if you, if you want a no, no problem knit, then that's the way to go. I think yeah. that's the one question I've seen from our customers is why can't I just hold mohair with the and, and you can do it that way? But it, it's going to take up more space in those um, in those stitches and it might not have as much drape, so it might look a bit more a bit more solid. Yeah. Really, yeah. And I, I think too, like you you felt strongly that you really wanted you love the drape in the vanilla yeah. sweater. It was the one re like it was the thing it, that set, sets it apart because yeah. you know. Um, so it was, I think it was important to you to, to make yeah. sure that if you're rolling out a vanilla fluff that it was redone and done right and yeah. you really have worked it from yeah. the Yeah, this is completely um, reworked and, um, but there's nothing to stop you from taking elements from one and putting it in the other. Just make sure that you have enough yarn if you're increasing your yarn yeah. and make sure you're happy with the, with the fabric that you're creating. So knit a swatch, wash it and see, see how yeah. it behaves, you know? So yeah. That's the joy of knitting. You get to do whatever you like. But this is here now. We hope you love it. We hope that you do take advantage of the courses to um, help raise some money too. Yeah. Okay. Fun. Maggie, um, what do you have in your hand now? Because we have yet something else to show you. We had a delivery. Um, I have a basket full of Vondre. Vondre, which is Rama's so excited worsted weight sock yarn. And it's gorgeous. 100% wool. The colors. I just love these colors. The colors. I bought some of this one last time. I know. It's go in the I now. know. It's lovely gray. Anyway, and this time with this order of Andre, um, first of all, we got more of it, so that's wonderful. Hopefully, everybody who wants it can get it. Yes. And we're gonna have special sets, um, similar. Re recently, we put together a Rama mitten kit where you got a mitten booklet uh, from Rama. From Rama, uh, in English. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that has like six balls of Rama Strick Garn, so you can knit a couple pairs of mittens um, it, from the book. It was very popular. It was very popular. We keep it in stock. We restock it. It's yep. still in the shop if you'd like. Yep. Um, and um, Rama has put together this booklet mm. with pattern support just for Vondre sock yarn. Oh, it's so really nice. It's we really are going to have sets nice. in the shop. Yeah. Yeah, so lace, but in a worsted way. That's going to be so fast. Yeah. These little, little slipper socks. Oh. So good. So good. Yeah. There's so many good patterns in here. And how many? Said, do you know how many are in there? Off the top I of your head? I don't remember off the top of my head. Several. It is several. It is several. Um, so we're going to have a couple of different options of colors, you know, but you buy A or B. Nice. Yeah. Stripes. Um, Very simple, but you know, just easy to knit. It's in English. It is in English. It's been trans. So you'll see some of the pages are still in Norwegian, but the pattern instructions have been translated. To get you knitting is all in English, yes. Yes. Yeah. So we're very excited yeah. for this. So and we really do like this yarn. This yeah. is new to the shop. We've only, I think, had it once, maybe twice before. I think only no, once. No, I think we only had it once. Yeah. And, and it flew. It flew out and it's got a lovely ply on it. Yep. It's got a lovely feeling. It does. And it knits up fast. Um, be sure to check the product page. There are special wash instructions direct from Rama. <laughs> yes. Double check before I put it in the Do you remember what they shop. are? They want you to throw this in the washing machine. They are positive. <laughs> I double checked. I'm like, is this someone joking with Why? me? Why? What is there? And they said it opens up the fibers and so opens okay. up the fibers and we are um, nothing if not brave and curious people so here. So do we not need to put do it that. in the dryer. Yes, but they want you to put it on. I believe it's like a cool. This is not superwash. That's the point. Um, <laughs> we're putting non superwash we're in the washing machine. Yeah, but. And to knit okay. your average woman's size pair of socks, you will need three balls. Yes, because it's thick yarn. So you could do two with a contrast. Um, if you're, I believe the men's socks need four balls of yarn. Because they have big feet. Yeah. But yeah. Wonderful stuff. Uh, do you want to yeah, show the colors? the colors? All right, I'm going to show you this one again. I really like it. I realize it's gray. <laughs> this is eight. And it's a sort of bluey, charcoal-y gray. It's nice. Yeah. 
This one is 10. I like this. I really Terracotta. Like this, one, yeah. this one's six. I really like this too. Um, seven. It's lovely blue. I like that one. 36, which is a black. These are all dyed. This one's this one's a nice one too. I'm gonna just uh, yeah. 14. I love that. I love a dusky pink. I yeah. really, really do. And eleven is green. There is a white oh, or a nice cream as well. Mm -hmm. Twelve. I think I've been through all mine. Okay, and then the, the last one I have here, we do have, there is a natural cream. Um, this one is 09. Beige. It's like a beige. Dyed beige. Yep. Yep, so um, I think that's all the colors it comes in. We yeah, have everything. Like, yep. So yes, if you want to be knitting socks that are 100% natural wool, this is a great option. And yeah, really nice. And we love the book. We're really excited about yeah. the book too, the booklet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I think we have talked about everything right now. We are going to we are going to announce another winner. What? Needles. 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 You have to wait to hear who the winner is. <laughs> <laughs> needles. Now, customers have been asking us to uh, show a little more in depth yeah. um, the needles, which we think we want to do, but we're going to do it uh, throughout the, the following shopcast. Yeah. Especially, there's some that I'd like to show that we're actually out of stock on. I really want to look at the shorties yes. sets. Yes, um, so we'll do that. And we have lace sets, but some of them are out of stock. But So I just pulled a full set to start. Yes, this is the US 2 through 15. Mm -hmm. I this is the one I bought too. It's worth it. Um, you can either get two through eight and nine through 15, or you can get the entire set. Yes. The bag that it comes in is so lovely. It's got such a nice feel to it. So that is two through eight on this side. So those are your tips. And then and on then this on side, this is nine look at it, it gets so big. Mm -hmm. The joins are nice and smooth. Perfect. What also comes in the kit are, there's three cables in here. Two through eight use a small cable set. So we also now have cables that you can purchase if you want extra cables. Yes. If you're purchasing a cable for two through eight, you want the one that says small. Yep. Um, and then nine through 15 uses a large. And that what that indicates is the size of the connector itself. So all these um, come in small with a small connector or large that has a large one. And then they come in different uh, lengths. Yeah. So you do you do get set up really well with what comes in the set. I haven't purchased any extra yet because I'm working just fine with what's there. Yeah. Um, and also in the front pocket, have you discovered this? Mm -hmm. um, they send you home with a whole bunch of lovely stitch markers. You've got um, T pins, which are really good for tightening your joints. Yeah. And then you've got these things that you screw on the end of your cables if you want to take uh, your needles off and a needle gauge. So all of that comes in this lovely set and we do sell a fair few of these. Yeah. For sure. I love I love it the bag that nice. comes in. Um, yeah. yeah it's really nice. A good set. And so we have extra cables now and we also have extra tips. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, if you know that you're going to be doing a lot of, um, you know, you need US2 or something a lot, yep. you can buy extra tips and you can buy extra cables as well. And extra tightening keys and extra stoppers. Yep, all, all the paraphernalia. So that's this one, and we will bring another one um, at random to the next Shopcast and show you that, yeah. just so that you can experience what all is in there and what they're good to, to knit with. So this is actually, um, US2 is a little large for sock knitting. So uh, you wouldn't necessarily use this for sock knitting. This is more anything Unless else. Unless you're knitting Vondre, and then that pattern. Unless you're knitting with like the US4. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. But traditional sock yarn weight, you would want a different set or, um, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, and we'll, we'll we do have that. different sock sets, whether There's you're a, lot. a DPN knitter or yep. um, you could use, I usually use US ones yep. for my sock. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so that. we are going to announce the winner now. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to announce the winner. <laughs> So in order to be in the running to win a prize, you need to leave us a comment on the um, on the podcast down below. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the, the YouTube channel. 
Uh, and Becca Fisher did that last time and she is our winner. Uh, that first little Aradale cake Maggie holds up looks like a gold nugget and I'm going full dragon in <laughs> wanting it for my hoard. Lovely shop cast as always, ladies. Thank you, Becca. Congratulations. You're a winner of a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle. You know the drill. Just send us an email to info at the Wooly Thistle.com, two L's and Wooly. Put winner all in capitals. That way you jump out at us and we will get that off to you so that you can spend it. So thank you very much. So um, we do have more shop update uh, in the form of what the heck is this? Well, we're going to tell you right after Rachel. We have Rachel with us all the way from Fair Isle. She sent us another postcard, which is just wonderful. You're going to see some blue skies for a change. Yes. <laughs> and so she answers some more of your questions. So let's go to Rachel. Be sure to come back if you want to know what's in here, okay? Mm -hmm. Hi, Willie Thistlers. It's Rachel from Barkland Croft here in Fair Isle. And look, we actually have a blue sky and sunny day, which is amazing. First time in a very long time. So I have a few more questions uh, from my last episode from the, the comments, so I'll do my best to answer those here. Um, a few of the sheep wandering in and out of shop. So uh, my first question is from Joanne, and she asks, what is her real job when not tending the croft? Well, like most folk here in Fair Isle, over the years I've done a number of different part-time jobs, sort of as and when needed. Um, the last year or so I've been reducing the number of extra jobs that I've I've had um, purely so that my my main focus can really be on the the croft and running the croft my online business um, but alongside that I still do some work for Shetland Nature which is a wildlife tour company based in Shetland um, I'm still the relief cook for the primary school 
Um, I've been standing in as the island postman while my neighbour's been having her first baby. Um, so that's been good. And I'm a volunteer at the museum here in Fair Isle. That's the George Waterston Memorial Centre and Museum. And I'm the uh, organist at the chapel. Uh, my next question is from Vivian and she asks, how do you keep your body strong in order to do all the work that you do to care for your flock? Um, well, I think the answer to that is is the, the work on the craft and, and with the sheep is, is what keeps me strong, really. Um, certainly strength is a, a, a major factor in, in dealing with things here. Here we've got Violet coming to say hello and saucepan. Um, you might remember them if you look at uh, last, I think it would be April's video, April or May certainly. Um, they were just tiny little lambs in, in that video. So uh, yes, sorry, back to Vivian's question. Yes, so it's, it's very much the, the work I do on the croft um, and with the sheep that, that does keep me physically fit and, and strong. Um, certainly things like shifting bags of feed, uh, generally they'll come on a pallet on, on the lorry um, and get sort of dumped off the back of the lorry at the edge of my property. Um, each bag of feed is, I think, 25 kilos. So then you've got to carry 40 sacks weighing 25 kilos each into my shed. So things like that keep me strong. Um, pushing bales of silage, you can just sort of see those in, in the background to try and point at them, uh, the sort of the, the green bales of silage. Um, some of the heavier ones probably weigh, weigh more than I do. Um, at least they're circular and they do roll, but trying to push them through, you know, sort of six inch deep mud for about 100 metres is a, isn't very fun, but it, it, does, uh, it does keep your arms strong. So yeah, so thing, things like that. Um, also, okay, it's only four times a year, but when we car the hill sheep so when we round them up and bring them down um you know we're, we're probably covering over the hills maybe about three miles four miles um most of that unfortunately is is running up hills which i hate uh, but um i guess that's that's my cardio work for, for the year <laughs> My next question is from Monica and she has asked, how often do you get to the mainland and is there a local place on the island that people hang out at and get together with, like a pub, restaurant or community centre? Um, really good question. So the, the first part of that, how often do you get to the mainland? Um, well, to us here in Fair Isle, mainland is Shetland, um, the, the main isle of Shetland, the biggest island is, is called mainland. Um, but then there is the mainland, which is Scotland, the, the UK. Um, I don't get out to either very often, to be honest. Um, and that, that's not just because of COVID. Um, it's A, the expense of getting off Fair Isle. Then you've got the expense of travelling south, especially if you're, you're taking a vehicle with you. Um, so it, it, it's a lot of money to, to go uh, away. Um, also, if I'm away for, say, more than a, a day trip out to the dentist or something, um, I then have to pay someone to, to come and, and feed the animals and look after the croft for me. So um, probably pre-COVID, I, I maybe got off aisle twice a year, um, you know, once for, well, I say a holiday, but probably just uh, just down to Edinburgh or, or something like that. Um, not a exotic <laughs> holiday anywhere. Um, and then there might be the odd day trip out if I've had to take one of the dogs to the vets um, or go to the dentist or, or something like that. Um, last year was, was probably the year, <laughs> ironically, that I, I've been off aisle most because I, I went south um, to just near Newcastle for the barber. Uh, visit to the barber factory um, and then also at the end of November I went uh, um, to London um, for the, the the sort of judging bit of the the barber competition sorry Violet is now eating the tripod Violet Violet that's not eating is it I'm gonna try anyway okay um, and then uh, to answer the next part of Monica's question, is there a local place on the island where people hang out? Um, no, <laughs> is, is the basic answer. Uh, there, there's never been sort of a, a pub or restaurant or anything like that here. There, there was, hang on, <laughs> stop it, that's naughty. There, there was the, the bird observatory um, 
which you could go and eat a meal at if, if you wanted to and they did have a a, a bar there um i don't know that it was used a huge amount though by residents of, of the aisle um, except for if there was maybe sort of a, a party or something like that um, we do have a, a community hall here um, which is is used by the primary school they have their PE sessions um, in that um, it's also used to things like island meetings um, if we ever get people in to deliver <laughs> Uh, to do concerts, things like that. That's uh, what, what the hall's used for. There is, I think, a women's keep fit night once a week, if that floats your boat, uh, doesn't mind. Um, and there's a men's darts night once a week, um, but neither of those are really my kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there's, there's not really many opportunities to get get together. Um, probably going to chapel is, is sort of, you know, seeing people at the shop. Um, or down at the pier when we're unloading the boat is, is about as social as it, it gets. Um, Patricia asks, did you knit the rainbow sheep sweater on a knitting machine? Uh, and if so, what knitting machine do you use? Um, yeah, great question. I, I did knit that on a, a knitting machine. Um, and I'll put a little clip of my machine in here for you. Please excuse the mess in the background of this photo, but this is the knitting machine and ribber setup that I have. So my knitting machine is a Silver Reed SK280 and the ribber attachment is a Silver Reed SRP60N. And then my final question is from Alice. Are you helping, Saucepan? Saucepan's gonna help answer this one. How do you heat your home? Um, that, that's a great question. Uh, so different ways. Um, we have, well, yeah, I think all of the houses here have, have what we call central heating, uh, which is radiators in all of the rooms that are powered by heating oil um, or paraffin, whatever it is. Um, in my house, they're not especially effective. Um, so I don't really bother with them because it's just like, burning money to be honest um, I do have a uh, stove a small stove in the front room um, which is probably where I spend most of my time um, which uses coal and uh, call them briquettes uh, which are sort of compacted um, like sawdust blocks that you can put in to burn um, also any if you're kind of out on the beach any driftwood you can pick up and burn that um, obviously there's no trees here so we don't have a, a regular source of wood on the aisle um, so what we burn in those we, we have to buy in um, and then in a couple of rooms in the house uh, as with most houses here I have storage heaters um, and they are only powered by the wind turbines so they only work when we're on wind power um, but they're pretty effective so I have one of those in my knitting room um, and then the stove in the front room and that's probably where I spend the, the two rooms I spend most of my time in so uh, at least at least they're well heated. So one of the things that I haven't talked about for ages has been what I've been knitting. And uh, I've been busy working on uh, knitting up prototypes for the various uh, sizes of garments that will be in my online shop. So we're gradually getting there with those. So I haven't had a huge amount of time for hand knitting. Um, however, I did recently make this uh, little top that I'll put a, a picture of for my next door neighbours as they have just had their first baby, uh, a little baby boy called Brody, which is lovely. And that was a, a really quick uh, and, and easy knit to, to do. Um, just worked in, uh, is it garter stitch, where you just knit each row back and forth, um, which gives you that, that lovely texture. Um, and I knit that in, in some of my own Beecroft wool. The next project that I've been working on that I'm almost finished with is uh, this. Hopefully you can tell what it is. Um, it's sort of a, a balaclava with a little... Um, sort of collar on it 
and this is a test knit that I'm doing for Making Stories magazine. So I think this will probably be in the autumn issue. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. Um, and this has been quite a challenging knit for me. Um, I struggled a bit with some of the instructions, figured it out eventually, but uh, it's, it's been good to sort of challenge my brain cells a little bit with this one. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but uh, I've again knit this in my own wool and this is the Beecroft Butterscotch, which is a really nice pale uh, sort of fawny mauric colour. Um, and I think once this is washed and, and dressed, uh, it'll be lovely and, uh, and cosy and warm to wear, I say, as we've just got blue skies and sunshine. <laughs> Another project that I've been working on uh, is part of the Woolly Thistle uh, Colourwork Accessories Knit Along um, and it's the Acanthium Knits uh, and I was really excited to see a couple of other folk uh, in the Facebook group have been posting pictures of their ones as well. Um, I don't think I'm going to have them finished by the time the, the cal ends uh, but uh, it's been a, a great kickstarter for me. Um, so this is how I've got on so far. I've just got the, the little thumb bit and um, believe it or not I actually started that project not the ones I'm knitting now but a, a different pair um, I think about three possibly even four years ago for a woolly thistle knit along um, and I was very very kind of new to hand knitting um, certainly colour work um, and my tension was completely wrong and I think I got about half probably not even halfway up the first mitt uh, before realising that there's no way they would ever fit my hands. They would probably fit a, a three-year-old. So gave up on those thinking, oh, I'll come back to them one day. Never did. Um, so this was the, the perfect Kickstarter to um, cast on them again. And uh, luckily they, they seem to fit now, uh, a bit more experience behind me. And uh, definitely a tension swatch as well helped. And also, like I'm sure all of you that, that signed up for the, um, the, the Colour Work Accessories Cal, um, I got my copy of the Balvoni uh, bonnet, um, which I'm not knitting just yet, but I'm definitely going to because it looks at a fantastic pattern. Um, I have to excuse the quality of my, my printer, it's, it's pretty rubbish, but uh, how gorgeous is Corinne's daughter? Perfect model for all her, her future projects. I'm sure, like a lot of you, I absolutely loved the interview in the last episode of uh, the Woolly Thistle podcast that Corinne did with Ronnie Yunson of uh, Uradale Yarns. Wasn't that fantastic? Um, I learned so much. Uh, I don't know Ronnie personally, even though we're just a short hop away across the, the water from him, uh, but really enjoy following his, uh, his Instagram and, and social media posts. And uh, he's, he's certainly very involved with the... Uh, the, the sheep and yarn uh, markets here in Shetland um, and leading on from that into my, my final project that I have uh, lined up. Um, I actually bought this last year from Uradale as part of a kit and it's for this lovely jumper called Ripples um, by Hilly Knits and that's Hilly uh, van der Sluis, van der Sluis, apologies for the pronunciation and I'll put a, a better picture but it uses some beautiful, beautiful colours of the uh, Uradale yarn, which uh, I'm sure those of you who have been busy buying them from the Woolly Thistle now that they're in stock will be appreciating very soon, as soon as they reach you. Well, sadly, the sun didn't last for too long before the rain came, but that's fair all for you. It always feels like four seasons in one day. Well, enjoy what's left of the colour work, Cal. Happy knitting, and I'm really looking forward to being with you again next month. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that postcard from Rachel. She's really good to send us this on a monthly basis. We really enjoy them. She does such a good job. And Little Saucepan. And oh, her, her sheep, sheep names, they're the, the best. And then she knows each and every one, no matter what. Yeah. I would I would have a hard time, I think, recognizing. <laughs> like when the sheep was trying to eat the Yeah, the, Yeah, her <laughs> <Our> tripod. <laughs> so muddy i hope that the wind blows and takes all that uh waterlogged uh Ugh, stuff yeah. away when i was there in july uh, years ago in well 2017 um it was july and the sun was just shining every day that i was there very very lucky and it was gorgeous but it was still boggy i still got my boots so soaking wet one day wow. walking from the croft to the wee shop and all the jobs she does i know 
that's how they that's how they make things work is everybody has multiple jobs yeah but we are happy to help rachel uh make her dream come true of being a crafter and yarn maker she makes beautiful beautiful yarn so what's in here i hear you yelling we have wonderful things in here don't we maggie mm -hmm. this has been very very long in the making it has come do you mean hold the box sure while you open um this project was started long before COVID hit and COVID hit and put everything on hold because the whole world was shutting down. And so now that COVID is, you know, everyone's back to uh, being active again, we finally got these. And this is a very special project. <laughs> Dying to show you, but I have to say this is very much a project from my heart. I worked very closely with Katrina who is um, Tolsta Studio, and she is located on a Hebridean island in Scotland uh, from an area called Tolsta, funnily enough, and she makes beautiful textiles with Harris Tweed uh, fabric, with tweed. And so she and I got together, and we have in here beautiful tweed knitting bags. They're, they're on a small scale, so good for a sock or a small project. So this one here has the Harris Tweed official um, label on it, and it has the Woolly Thistles label here on the side. It's got a lovely uh, sturdy zipper, and it's got this lovely brushed cotton feel. Have you felt that? Yes, I have. And it's got a little I've pocket. Been, I've had a couple of these on my desk and I'm just like, Ooh. <laughs> It's got a gusseted bottom and it really is good for a sock project. So sock not, project, hat project, something small. Yeah, something small. And so this is one color. Let's see. Well, let's go with my go-to. We have a traditional gray and they all have the same... Um, lining inside which just feels lovely and they all have these gold zippers um, but with a lovely contrasting um, edging I hope you can this see. is a lovely green which is a very traditional tweed so we have that one this is really nice like yeah <laughs> this is a herringbone but you can just see the checkerboard coming through of the different orange and purples yeah there's little pops of color in there. Mm -hmm. really really nice let's see and then a little bit bold i love, I this. love this you'd find this anywhere right <laughs> really lovely it's and beautiful. then we've got this lovely sky baby blue these just feel good these are 100 percent wool of course yeah. the outer fabric is from from Harris now, um, Studio Tolsta Katrina is this looks good too. Yeah, this is complex. There's lots of colors in there. So she's a Scottish girl like me, but she's from um, the uh, Isle of Harris. We've seen this one, and um, she's married to an Indian gentleman. So they actually make their products in India. So um, she was stuck in Scotland until um, she was able to travel. And she took back bolts and bolts and bolts of Harris Tweed. This is another one you'll find in the dark. It's lovely though. Uh, she took back all these bolts of Harris Tweed with her that, that she had helped me select. And um, we'll put photos here of, of her staff making these in a beautiful um, workshop. Right, so, and then we've got this pretty pink. It's so girly, I love it. <laughs> I do. It's sort of a, there's sort of a herringbone happening there too. Yeah, it's really pretty. It really is. Look at all that weaving. I know. I know. Like, I don't know if you can, I mean, you can see it a little better now. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. Could you do that on a Richard Heddle? On a Richard Heddle? Rich, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Maybe Richard could. I don't know. Because <laughs> um, it's, it's one in one over and under. Did you know that Harris Tweed is made by Islanders who live, who are, you know, Harris uh, Islanders? They have, um, they have looms in their homes. Mm. And then there are uh, more commercial made Harris Tweed as well. But um, this is obviously 
the woolly thistles colors right here mm -hmm. in a pretty purple. So yeah. So we have all these colors. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors. And these are on sale starting today. Mm -hmm. Just look at that. Just look at that happiness. That. And you get one of these, which has all the colors on it. And care instructions from the Harris Tweed Authority, because it's very, very, um, th this, this uh, tweed is very um, protected by the island of Harris. And only uh, authentic Harris Tweed can put that logo on there. So I'm very proud that this came together. Really enjoyed working with Katrina and her team as well. And uh, I hope that you love these bags. We haven't done anything like this before. This was quite a project. And with yeah. COVID, it took twice as long, if not longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was great. So enjoy. Well worth the wait. Well worth the wait, for sure. So um, what else do we have? I think we're getting ready to say goodbye. However, we are going to let Kim take you out with uh, a yoga segment. We have a new yoga segment from Kim. You guys loved her last one. We're making a playlist uh, where mm -hmm. you can just go straight to Kim's yoga in the Wooly Thistle um, channel. Yep. So we're going to leave you with Kim and we'll see you in a couple of weeks and hopefully we'll see you in the shop. If you have any questions, just send us an email to info at the Wooly Thistle. Find us in all the places and follow us and just keep knitting. And remember, if you go out, take your knitting. Bye. Bye. Hello, Willie Thistlers. My name is Kim, and I am a yoga teacher based in central Alberta. I'm not only a yoga teacher, but I'm also a knitter, and I know firsthand just how much mm, discomfort knitting can sometimes cause to our bodies. I also know that if we get out of our chairs and do a little yoga, a little body movement, then some of the, that pain, discomfort, and uh, those aches and pains can just melt away and that will make us better knitters. We can knit for longer and we can knit without discomfort. So, sounds like a good deal to me. I'm so glad that you're back with me for another episode of Yoga for Knitters. If you'd like to learn more about me, what I do, you can visit my website, turninggroundyoga.com or find me on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook at Turning Ground Yoga. So today's practice is going to focus on our hips and on our wrists. And remember when I said that we need to get out of our chairs every now and then to do yoga? Well, we don't need to go very far. In fact, today's yoga practice is going to incorporate the chair for every single posture. So go ahead and grab a chair. Mine is just a standard old fold-up chair. I can get my legs underneath. You want to be able to get your legs underneath whichever chair you use. Probably a dining room chair will be just fine. The other thing you may find you need for today's practice is something to support the outside of your hips with. I've got two little balls of yarn. Um, so when I have my hips apart and my knee doesn't go all the way to the floor, like most people's doesn't, sometimes you want a little bit of support on the outside of the leg, just tucked in on the outside of the hip so that uh, there's the floor comes up to raise the knee and you don't have to use those inner muscles, the inner thigh muscles to hold your leg up. So that's the other prop you might want. Your balls of yarn work great. You can use uh, pillows, blankets, blocks, whatever you have. Okay, for our first pose, we're going to come into position in front of your chair with the seat facing you. And then if it feels good, you're going to bring the feet together nice and wide so there's a diamond shaped here in your inner thigh and then take your prop if you want it and place it on the outside of your hip so that the hip is supported and you can sit like this relatively comfortably for the next minute or so okay now we're going to come all the way forward and adjust where your chair is until your forehead connects with the chair seat. Turn this beautiful forward fold. And what you're feeling is an opening in the hips. Depending on where you're tight, you may feel this in the outside of the hip. 
near to the keister, or you may feel it in the muscles on the inner hip, <clears throat> but wherever you're feeling it, that's right for you today. That's where you need the opening. The forward fold portion of this part, uh, this pose is wonderful because it helps to act like a reset switch. It calms the nervous system, although knitting also does that, we know. And it just helps us to relax. Then bring the hands above the chair like this. You can rest your elbows on the chair if that feels good, or you can rest your wrists on the chair. And we're going to move the fingers one at a time, joining the thumb with the first, second, third, and fourth finger, and stretching the hands in between. So first finger, release. Second finger, release. Third finger, release. And fourth finger, release. Just continue doing that. Stretching the hands and moving the fingers through these magical mudras, hand positions, which I'll tell you a little bit about now. Jnana mudra is your first finger and your thumb together. This symbolizes the unity of universal and inner individual consciousness. Shuni Mudra is your second finger and thumb together. It symbolizes patience, discipline, and stability. Surya Ravi is your third finger and thumb together. It symbolizes energy, health, and balance. And Bodhi Mudra is your fourth finger and thumb together, which symbolizes communication, openness, and intuition. Finally, stretch your hands nice and wide. Squeeze them nice and tight. Stretch them out one more time. And then relax. And gently bring yourself up back to a nice, tall, seated position. Right on. So to get out of this one for your legs, if you have any props, take them out of the way. And then use your hands on the outside of your hips to bring the knees back together. Take the hands back behind you. We're just going to lift the heart, lift the chest, do a counter pose to that back bend. And then come back to a seated position. And this time, we're going to slide our legs nice and long underneath the chair. Okay, so this is staff pose or dandasana. So our legs are long. Our feet are flexed. We're at a 90-degree angle at the hips. And we're aiming our forehead towards the mat, uh, towards, not the mat, towards the chair one more time. Okay, here we go. I want you to fold forward, hinging from the hips, coming towards the chair, and then round. Now, if your legs, your hamstrings, the back of your legs are really, really tight, you can always bend the knees. In fact, you can use these little balls of yarn underneath your knees. Okay, if that's still not happening for you, all you need to do is bring the chair a little closer to your forehead. So you can use a prop, a pillow, a blanket, anything like that to bring the chair up. So there isn't quite so much bending in the back and strain on the back of the legs. <clears throat> you wanna find that place where you're at sweet, sweet discomfort, but not pain. We never ever wanna be in pain. So while we're here, we're gonna take care of our neck. <clears throat> when we knit, quite often, unless you're like pro and you never have to look at what you're doing, we draw our gaze downwards and we're looking at what we're doing. And that, of course, puts a little strain on the back of the neck. So I want you to take your hands, take your thumbs, bring them to the very back of the head, the occipital part of the skull. And I want you to just massage 
little circles all along the occipital bone of the skull. It can feel rather tender. That's how you know this needs to happen. If it's tender, that means you've been bending your head forward too much. Let's take care of it. Wonderful. That feel should, should feel really good. And then when you feel like you've had enough, you can let the hands drop down to the floor and allow the shoulders to completely relax. Take a deep breath in and feel your breath traveling all the way to the bottom of your lungs, feeling every part of your lungs. Nourishing you with oxygen. And each breath that you are aware of taking brings you back to the present moment, which is such an important thing. And I think as knitters, we get that. And that's part of why we knit. It keeps us present, keeps us focused, it keeps us mindful. Those are all aspects of yoga as well. Many parallels, all of them good. When you're ready, you're going to gently use your hands to roll us on up one more time. And then take that counter pose. So again, hands back behind you. Lift the heart, lift the chest, draw the head back. Perfect. This time we're going to bring only our left leg in, into um, land on the inside of our right thigh. And then again, if you need that prop on the outside of the left thigh, please place it there. Awesome. We're going to hinge forward once more. And this time, reach the right arm forward, grab the fingers with the left hand, and gently give the wrist a little tug back. So we're stretching through the forearm. Breathe deep. Two more deep nourishing breaths. Every breath keeps you present. Fills you with light. It's very healing. It's very restorative and it will make you a better person, not just a better knitter. One more deep breath in. And then gently release the wrist. Shake the hand out. And slowly make your way up. Wonderful. Can you feel how calming it is to lean forward? It's like a magic. My switch legs. So our left leg is straight. The right foot is planted to the inside of the left thigh. And then maybe you want that prop on the outside of your hip. And then hinge forward again if you need to bring that chair a little closer to your forehead. That's what props are for. <clears throat> and then flex the left hand back, grab a hold of the fingers, and gently pull the fingers towards your head, stretching through the left forearm. Breathe deep. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy this time that you're allowing yourself to do better, to be better, and to heal. Big deep breaths. One more, make it juicy. And then release the fingers, let the hand hang down and shake it out. And then gently come on up. Well done, we have one more to do. 
For our last posture, we are going to come to lie on our backs. So you want to wiggle your bum close enough to your chair so that your legs are resting on the seat of the chair and that's taking all the weight of your calves. Hmm. This is just a wonderful way to reset the spine. If you have any aches and pains in your back, which is pretty typical when you sit and knit for a while, this will just melt them away. The longer you hold this, the better you'll feel. But while we hold, we're going to do a little bit more work on our wrists. So grab a hold of your <clears throat> left hand with your right hand, and then you're going to very gently pull with your right hand. Pull your wrist away from your arm. Think about all the little tiny bones in your wrist and how much space they're getting now because you're pulling that space open very slowly, very gently. Nothing should hurt. And then you're going to very slowly, very, very slowly release the pressure and bring your hand back to where it was. Seeing all those little bones with your x-ray vision go back into place. It's tiny, but it's powerful. Kind of like a toddler. Let's switch sides. Grabbing your right hand with your left hand, gently pull and create space for all the little bones in your wrist. Breathe into it. And then just as slowly, with love, releasing, releasing, bringing everything back into place. Awesome. Think about how your wrists feel right now. They should feel spacious and alive and energized and taken care of. And so should you. So you can stay in this posture here for as long as you want. You can call it a shavasana. Or you can get rid of the chair and just lie on the floor completely. So however you want to end your practice, do that. Stay there as long as you want. And until we meet again, Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.